good evening students again we are meeting in another video uh, session where uh, we are going to see again based on the transport layer and uh, the slides here uh, I have used are uh, from the book computer networks fifth edition by Tannenbaum and Witheral uh, Pearson education 2011 okay okay we already uh, saw about the transport service that is being provided by the transport layer now uh, we are going to see the second uh, important aspect of the transport layer that is the elements of the transport protocol that has been actually working in the transport layer so when we consider the elements of uh, transport layer we see there are uh, around six uh, elements the initial one is uh, addressing followed by connection establishment connection release error control and flow control multiplexing and crash recovery so in this video we'll see about the first three elements of transport protocol that is addressing connection establishment and connection release in the very basic uh, aspect so when we look into the addressing element okay so whenever transport layer is considered it actually focuses on end to end transmission so we'll see a simple uh, scenario when an application process that is which has been used by the user wishes to set up a connection with a remote application process it must specify to which it has to connect with so the source and the destination have to be explicitly used here and the transport layer will establish an explicit connection between the source and the destination that is why it is called as end-to-end -end, uh, transmission okay so here this end-to-end -end transmission is established with the help of uh, the transport address and uh, this uh, transport address is defined uh, in such a way that this address has to listen the processes for connection requests okay uh, so here the tra transport address is defined in such a way that uh, this will let us know which processes can listen for connection request okay in the internet these uh, are termed as ports these listening process are called as ports okay so now uh, we have an access point in the transport layer that is called as transport service access point TSAP this is a specific endpoint in the transport layer okay specific endpoint in the transport layer actually this is where the connection is established with a remote system okay and uh, in network layer we have uh, a access point that is called as network service access point and this is what you mean by this is actually specifies this actually specifies the IP addresses okay so this network service access point is one is the IP address which actually uh, connects to the TSAP so a single network service access point can be shared by multiple TSAPs so one NSAP can be shared by multiple TSAPs that's what it is shown in this figure so when you consider host one where TSAP is the uh, transport service access point which uh, which is a specific endpoint in the transport layer so 
this through this only the connection is established with the uh, remote host that is host 2 so uh, n n sap is the ip address okay so in host 1 it is a single n sap with a single t sap okay so the transport connection is established with the t sap okay now in host 2 you check uh, it is a uh, it is a host where you have uh, where you have two server processes running so one server 2 and uh, it has got since it is one host it has got one ip address n sap and it is shared by two t saps so when a uh, transport connection is established with n sap with t sap 1522 it is with the server 1 okay server 1 process so multiple process can be running in a host right so okay so this is what the address is okay so the transport layer adds t saps as one of the specific endpoint which is required for connection that is end to end connection so T saps are ports for uh, transport control protocol as well as user data gram protocol okay when uh, transport connections are established these run through the N saps on each host okay uh, so we will see a scenario for uh, transport connection then you can understand uh, based on this diagram also so let us look at the diagram okay uh, suppose you have a mail server in host 2 okay so you can take it as server 1 okay so in host 2 there are more than one processes being running okay uh, server 1 is a mail server and server 2 can be some other uh, process being running so we are focusing on server 1 that is a mail process it attaches itself to tsap 1522 so when it wants to establish a connection with a remote host or when a remote host wants to establish a connection with this mail server it has to attach with this tsap 1522 okay so this is the end point of this host to for the mails server process okay so now so this tsap 1522 in the mail server process in host 2 will wait for an incoming call okay now it will attach itself with the uh, tsap 1522 this attaching of the uh, mail server process with the corresponding tsap is entirely dependent on the uh, operating system okay so uh, example a call a primitive uh, listen can be used for such purpose okay now this is all about host 2 where a mail server is mail application uh, program that is a mail server program actually is running okay now host 1 is an application process uh, where the user uses that application you need to send a mail to the host 2 okay so wants to send an email so what it does is it attaches to the tsap 1208 okay so now uh, this uh, application process on host 1 will now issue a connect request the connect request is actually to the mail server so this specify this connection request will specify tsap 1208 on host 1 as a source and tsap 1522 on host 2 as the destination because it needs to send an email so it requests a connection with the mail server so this is sent as a request connection request where uh, the end points for the transmission are specified as tsap 1208 and tsap 1522 okay so that is why it is called as end to end transmission okay now uh, the S this actually establishes so connection request sent by the host to where uh, the application process wants to send an email now establish a connection now establishes a connection between the application process with the server that is email server so after the connection is established what happens in the application process and host to now we can send the mail that's it okay so uh, the mail server what it does 
so I uh, the host you can send the email to any person okay but it uh, it requests the connection with the mail server in order to send the email okay now the connection is established and uh, the host one the application process and the host one is sending an email now what does the mail server actually do right now it will uh, just responds it will just respond that it will deliver the message after this particular uh, process is done the transport connection is released between the host 2 that is a mail server and host 1 that is the application process which has sent the email so this is what actually happens when a transport connection is established based on addressing okay so addressing is based on tsap and nsap okay next is we are going for the next that is connection establishment so how the connection is established after giving the connection request so that is the second major element after the connection is established sorry connection is requested okay so i hope the connection request between the end end system or end host is now understood right with the help of tsap and nsap okay now we are going for connection establishment so in uh, transport layer the connection establishment is done using a three way handshake process three way handshake connection process okay so actually there are three protocol scenarios in this uh, handshake uh, process and uh, we are going to see the first one okay uh, in the first one what uh, we are going to see is each peer that is each host that is host one and host two will understand which is the current connection that is being established okay this is possible by uh, including a sequence number okay so any number of connections can be es established or any number of connection requests can be uh, connection requests can be produced by the host between the host but which is the correct connection that is being requested that is identified with the help of the sequence number and uh, both the host need not uh, maintain the same sequence number it can maintain different sequence numbers okay so now we'll see based on the diagram uh, how this connection establishment is actually made okay so host one chooses a sequence number say x and sends a connection request to host two okay very simple to understand so first the host one issues a connection request in that this is the first connection request or second connection request that sequence number is maintained by a small variable say x okay and host 2 on receiving this connection request with the sequence number say x what it does is it replies to that connection request with an acknowledgement segment okay so suddenly i'm saying a segment in transport layer every packet whatever message we are sending is considered as segment so even the connection request is sent as a segment with a sequence number x and the host 2 after receiving the connection request segment with sequence number x acknowledges that particular connection request with the sequence number x with the acknowledgement segment so this segment also consists its own sequence number say y so the host to have to give a sequence number for the acknowledgement that is accepted for a particular connection request say, right so that in that uh, sequence number it it uses its own sequential uh, number say y okay so this is the initial sequence y so uh, I, I am I clear with X and Y so X is host 1 sequence number for the connection request Y is 
the sequence number for that particular connection requests x by means of an acknowledgement okay so now now host 1 what it does so it receives the acknowledgement from host 2 right yes okay so it finds that it is the uh, acknowledgement that has been received from host 2 for its connection request say x so now what it does is it sends the data it sends the data along with the acknowledged sequence number y for its connection request sequence x okay so this is what happens actually in the connection establishment okay so uh, this is a very simple scenario okay so host one establishes a connection by sending a connection request segment with sequence say one okay x is now one okay now host two receives the connection request with sequence x is one and now it sends the acknowledgement segment with its own sequence number y that is say a let us say a for the received connection request with the acknowledgement x for for that the acknowledgement is x that is one so host two sends an acknowledgement a for the corresponding request acknowledgement as one okay now host one receives the acknowledgement for its sequence number one as acknowledgement a from host 2 right now it got a signal that you can now transfer data as the connection is established between host 1 and host 2 okay now host 1 sends data with sequence 1 and acknowledgement a so now host 2 understands that it is the data from the host 1 for the connection request 1 for which it is acknowledged with a okay so this is a very simple scenario so this a uh, video actually uh, in this video i wanted uh, to tell about uh, addressing connection establishment and connection release so you have variance in connection establishment say with where uh, duplicates and delayed uh, segments are handled for uh, request and uh, acknowledgement so in the forthcoming videos uh, we'll see about that two scenarios okay